going on everybody welcome back to another video um, so I won't be able to get out fishing today unfortunately it's raining it's windy and it just doesn't look very good um, I got out yesterday it was a great day I got three muskies so I was pretty pumped about that um, but I figured I'd take the opportunity today with the crappy weather to show you guys how I make my musky tackle boxes um, just a couple weeks ago my car got broken into they stole everything I got my fish finders my musky lures a lot of my bass gear um, they luckily left my fishing rods for whatever reason, I still don't know. Um, but if, for anyone watching, let that be a lesson learned. Don't leave your your fishing gear in your car. I got home super late one night, figured, oh, I'll just unload it in the morning. And I wake up the next morning, my window was smashed and all my gear was gone. But that's in the past. So I figure I'll show you guys today how I make my musky tackle boxes. And this is also great for those bass fishermen who like to fish giant swim baits. Um, it can be hard to find tackle boxes that store all that stuff. Um, they make some on the market, like there's the Lakewood tackle boxes, but they're like $300, $400. They're super nice, but I mean, not everybody can afford that. So I'll show you how I make mine. They're budget friendly. If you're a shore fisherman, it's got a strap so you can carry it. And that way you have hands free to carry your fishing rods and everything. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So you're gonna need two things, that's it. Um, the first thing you're gonna need is a soft shell cooler. The one I like is this Ozark Trail from Walmart. It's the 48 can cooler. It's got the nice flap to open up inside. It's white so you can see all your lures very nicely. Uh, and then the second thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need two lengths, two 10 foot lengths of the vinyl downspout pipe. You can get this at Lowe's, Rona, Home Depot, uh, any hardware store. Um, you're gonna want the vinyl, you're gonna wanna avoid the the aluminum, I believe it is. The aluminum is going to be a lot harder to cut. And when you cut it, you're going to have sharp edges, which could cut your hands when you pull lures out of the box. The vinyl is super lightweight, easy to cut. You can cut it with a handsaw if you don't have any power tools. Um, but that's it. So let's get started. So if you're going to be using the same cooler, I'm using the 48 can Ozark Trail one. You're going to want to cut these downspout pipes to nine and a quarter inches long. That just works out perfectly so that the lid still closes. If you're using a different brand, you're gonna to have to kind of figure out what length you're gonna to wanna to cut your downspout pipe. And because I have a miter saw, I'm gonna use that. But like I said, you could literally cut this vinyl downspout pipe with just a handsaw. So let's get started. And also something to make your life easier is I have this piece of wood set up here with a clamp. So that way I don't have to measure each piece and I can just literally slide this in, cut it, pull it out, slide it, slide it farther until it hits that piece of wood again, and then cut it again. So just a tip to save you some time. So now that you have all your downspout uh, pipe cut, we can just literally start putting it in. And this is why I said it's super easy because literally now that you have all these lengths cut, you just start throwing them in like so. In the last row, you get four like this. And that fits perfectly, so nothing's falling over. And this is exactly why I like the uh, 48 can soft shell coolers from Walmart, the Ozark Trail one, just because they literally fit perfectly. I've used some other ones in the past and you'll have a little bit of space, but like you can't get them all to fit in perfectly. So then things are falling over, but this one just, for whatever reason, works perfect. And also, if you want to do bucktails, I'm not doing bucktails in this box, but if you did, what I do with some of my other ones is I cut slits in here, and that will hold the hooks. So you can actually put two or three bucktails in each one of those, so you can get about eight in there. But as you can see, this stores about 20, I think 20 to 22 lures. Especially if you're going shore fishing, you don't want to bring everything. You can just load up this box with everything that you're going to need for that day, and it's perfect. And also you get the front zipper here so you can put um, all your tools in there, extra hooks, stuff like that. Front pocket is where I like to keep my leaders. 
extra liters. Um, and then you get the side here where I keep my like cutting tools like the bolt cutters to cut hooks in case a muskie swallows a lure too far. My file to sharpen hooks. Um, and then same thing, you got another one on the other side over here. So, all right, I'll go get my lures and we'll start loading this box up. So we got all our lures that I want to store in here. Um, this is going to be my fall musky lure box, specifically for Lake St. Clair. Um, so I got the rover here. And as you can see, they just slide right straight down in there. You just take the hooks and hook it on there. It's boom, simple. I got a Poseidon, same thing. Just going to stuff it in there. More rovers. This is the clown color one. One of my favorites. Hot bait down at Lake St. Clair is the Sabeel Magic Swimmer. And see, this is one of the nice things about this tackle box is it avoids this type stuff. So you're not constantly getting all your lures hooked. But yeah, this is the Sabeel Magic Swimmer. Um, as you can see, this one's been bit more than a few times. And this is actually what I caught my three muskies on yesterday. Just slide it right down in one of these slots. Boom. Got a natural color one for the clearer water. Got some restless riders. These are always a hot bait down there. And then something new that I'm trying out this year is the Claymores from Toddy Tickle. He just started making them and uh, they look pretty sweet. So I can't wait to see how they work. Got a second one in a bright fire tiger color. This lure is pretty sick. Another Sabio fire tiger. I think you can kind of see there's a theme for Lake St. Clair. Fire tiger seems to be a hot color. And then next thing is our tools. So these are the bolt cutters we use to cut hooks in case a muskie swallows the bait. You can put them here, you can put them in here, whatever works for you guys. Something else I recommend that everyone, every musky angler keeps is some band-aids. It's a must. Throw that in there. Got your scissors. I like to keep these on here so you can just kind of clip it on, make quick cuts. Also a little bit of scent if you want that. Throw that in there. Got the file. Sharpen those hooks. Throw that in there. Spare hooks, six aught. Keep those on hand because anytime you gotta cut the hooks, it's always good to have some spare. I keep them on the side over here. And if you're shore fishing and you don't want to carry around one of the giant bump boards, this little Rapallo one works great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of Velcro straps to the top. So that sits on here like that. Actually, I'll go grab them and I'll show you. So these are the Velcro straps that I found at the dollar store. I thought they would work, but they're a little bit short. But I think if I can figure out how to stick two of these together and then possibly maybe glue that down on the lid here, then we could just do this. I think that might work. So then when you open the lid, that stays there, boom, get your lures. And like I was saying, this is why it's so nice. Grab a lure, throw it back, grab another lure, throw it back, and you get no tangles. Everything stays upright so your hooks don't get rusty. Um, the problem with leaving them in those small trays is sometimes uh, with, if they're wet, the hooks start to rust out. And also some of the tails on these swim baits start to go a little bit crooked or whatever so this keeps them all nice and straight and because these lures are quite expensive you want to protect your investment in these lures and that's it that's literally all you need to do to turn this cooler into a musky tackle box slash giant swim bait tackle box it's that easy now that the weather's starting to get better and it's getting into the fall season i will be out musky fishing quite a bit so make sure you stay tuned and follow along um, and I'll be showing some tips on how I catch those muskies. Also, if you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends, anyone who might be looking to make a tackle box or just getting started in the muskie fishing game. This will be a perfect video for them. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.